In this video, we are looking at conditional formatting in Excel and specifically how to use formulas for formatting. Using this method, we can format a cell based on a value in another cell, which means we can format an entire row based on one cell in that row. This is a really useful technique. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's start with understanding how conditional formatting with formulas really works. Conditional formatting is applied where the result of a formula is true or deemed to be true. What we mean by this is any cell calculation that returns true or a non-zero number will have formatting applied. If the value is false, zero or not a number, the formatting is not applied. Here in cell G6, we have a group by function based on our table. We're not going to go through this function in this video, but we will use it as the basis for our conditional formatting. Firstly, let's suggest we want to highlight the values which are greater than 200. So we want to create a formula that returns true if the value is greater than or equal to the value in K4. To achieve this in cell K6, I'll type equals. Then I want to check where I6 is greater than or equal to K4. This returns true because 271 is greater than 200. If we copy this down into the rows below, unfortunately, it doesn't calculate the correct values. Some of these are over 200, but don't display true. One is only 149, but displays true. The issue is that we didn't fix the cell reference, which means the reference of K4 changes for each subsequent row. So if we go and add some dollar signs to K4, we can fix the cell reference. Now, when we copy it down, it calculates the correct values. So we've now got our calculation. That means I'm going to go into that first cell and I will copy the formula by pressing Control C. Now let's select the equivalent range of cells that we wish to apply the formatting to, and that is I6 to I18. Then from the home ribbon, I can click conditional formatting and new rule. There are various options in here. We want to select use a formula to determine which cells to format. In the formula field, I will paste the copied formula by pressing control V. Now let's click the format button. There are various options in here for number formatting, font, border, and fill. Let's suggest in this example, we want a green fill. Then I'll click OK and OK again to get back to Excel and now the formatting is applied. Notice how everywhere the formula calculated as true is also where the formatting is applied. Now the true or false column we calculated was purely so we could check our formula before using it in the conditional formatting. We don't need this anymore. So I will select all the cells and press delete. Right, let's go and check this out. I'm going to change 200 to 300, and there we go. Everything updates. Our conditional formatting now shows the items which are greater than or equal to 300. Now we know that conditional formatting is based on a true or false value for each cell, we can use this knowledge to apply any formatting we wish. In cell K6, I'll type equals, then I want dollar, G6, and we want to check where that does not equal $G7. This checks where a value in the first column does not equal the value in the row below. We have three columns, so let's drag that calculation across, and then we can drag that calculation down. It displays true for the last instance of each item. Here we can see that alpha changes to Bravo and the last instance of alpha calculates as true. We can see the same for Bravo, Charlie and Delta. Therefore, we can use this to provide conditional formatting which gives the appearance of subtotals. I can now go to cell K6 and copy that formula. I will then select the equivalent range that we want to format, which is G6 to I18. Then from the home ribbon, I'll select conditional formatting and new rule. Again, we want to use a formula to determine which cells to format, and then I can paste that copied formula. I'll click on the format button, 
and let's apply this so the font is bold and there is also a top and bottom border. I can then click OK and OK again to get back to Excel and we have formatted the entire row to look like a subtotal. Once again, we no longer need our formulas, so we can select those and press delete. Do we always need to create a formula range with true or false values to see how the formatting is applied? Of course not. We just need to realize that the formula used in conditional formatting is relative to the top left cell of the selected range. A formula result is useful so we can see which values are true or false before we apply the formatting and it's also useful as a way to troubleshoot if the formatting isn't coming out as we expect but we don't need it and as we get more experience we can skip this step and enter the formula straight into the conditional formatting window. Let's suggest we now want to format the grand total row and we are going to avoid the interim calculation step in this example. So I will select the range G6 to I18 and then click conditional formatting new rule. Once again, this will be based on a formula. In the box, I will type equals. Now I always want this to check the first column. Therefore, I need to enter $G to fix the column reference. I don't want to fix the row, which means I can enter six without a dollar sign. Then we want to test where that value is equal to grand total, and that is in double quotes. Now let's format that so it has a black fill with a white font, and that font is bold. We can then click OK twice, and that brings us back to Excel, and the total row is now formatted exactly as we want. Now, there are a few things that can catch us out with this method. Firstly, dynamic calculations, and secondly, calculation order. Our formula in G6 is a dynamic calculation. In our table, if delta changes to Charlie, the number of values change, but the result is still within the formatted range, so everything updates correctly. I'll just press Ctrl Z to undo that. But if we change alpha to echo, some of the values are now outside the formatted range and therefore do not have formatting applied. So if we're working with dynamic calculations, we need to select a range big enough for all future calculations. In this example, we also have competing rules because the last row contains the text of grand total, but it also has a value which is greater than 300. I will select a cell which is in both formatted ranges and then click conditional formatting and manage rules. This shows the rules applied to the selected cell and the order in which they are applied, which means if I select the grand total formatting rule and click the down arrow, it will move position. When we click apply, it is now the green format which is applied to the value of the grand total row. If we move that back up and click apply, it will now return to its previous state. And that is how to use formulas for conditional formatting. It's all about understanding the true or false value for each cell. So I hope you can put this knowledge to good use and start using conditional formatting to streamline your workflow. If you like this video, then why not subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.